What's up everybody, I'm Matt Brody and today I'm going to show you how to take awesome fireworks photos. I'm here at Shelter Cove on Hilton Head at Harbor Fest and we're going to have some fireworks later and since 4th of July is coming up, I thought I'd show you guys how to take awesome fireworks photos like this. It's actually not as hard as you think, it's just a couple of simple tricks and I'll show you now. So right off the bat I think it's important to know that the way that we're going to do this is we're actually going to take a bunch of individual fireworks photos and then put them together in Photoshop and it's a really simple process to make them look amazing. The key to a great fireworks photo is a tripod. So you've got to have your camera set up on a good tripod and you're going to make sure you have a long exposure to get the full burst of the fireworks. Boo. Yo, what's up what's guys? Up? How's it going? You know Beave, this is my brother. I am the one and only. Check out his channel here or here. One of one of these places will be a thing. Let's think. It's or gonna, it's gonna be over here. It's gonna be right here. There? Or it's in the comments down below because we couldn't figure out the thing here. Top line of the description. Number one, you gotta put me in numero uno lino in the description now. <laughs> So fun fact, my brothers and I pretty much grew up here. We spent pretty much every day coming to Shelter Cove and skating until we got kicked out. And then we would come back the next day and do it all over again. So Beef, how much do you love slime? Slime is the creation of the devil. And there's a person, it's stuck all over me. There's a person selling it at the table over there, and I'm gonna go choke him out. Hold on, I gotta get it off my fingers. I know how to get it off you. Yeah? Good. Because apparently this doesn't stick to kids' hands like it sticks to adults' hands. This is like straight glue. Alright, so the first step in taking great fireworks photos is you're gonna wanna have a longer exposure with your shutter speed. Something in the neighborhood of a maybe a full second to two to three seconds. It's kind of kind of depend on how much ambient light you have, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that uh, your, your background is completely black, but you're still getting a lot of the burst from the firework. And so when it starts going off here, I'll let you know what the actual exposure ends up being. So the other big key is you're gonna to wanna to set your camera to a manual focus and go ahead and set it through infinity. That way you don't have to worry about your focus shifting in and out as you're trying to take pictures of fireworks. So in this case, I'm shooting with a 70 to 200. It's got vibration reduction uh, built into the lens. You wanna make sure you turn that off since you're locked down on a tripod with a long exposure. You don't want any kind of shift in the lens as you do this. Just go ahead and turn off your vibration reduction. All right, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're actually gonna photograph each of the individual fireworks that they show. This isn't gonna be a big try to capture the entire grand finale kind of a thing. We're gonna make that in Photoshop later and it's super simple. Right now we're gonna focus on just getting great individual firework pops. All right, so the fireworks are gonna start any second. Just to recap, I've got the 70 to 200. I'm zoomed out to 70 right now just to kind of get a wide shot. Uh, my manual focus is set to infinity. I've got my image stabilization turned off. I'm shooting raw and I'm not really worried about the color balance yet because I can always adjust that in post. I'm shooting full manual right now with everything. My exposure, my focus, everything. And that's gonna keep my images really consistent once we start taking pictures of fireworks and they don't change up. You don't want this to be a shutter priority or an aperture priority setting. You want your images to be consistent and you wanna be able to control it. All right, so I'm shooting at about a second and a half at F5 ISO 320. You 
What I'm doing now is trying to time it so that I get the full burst in the open shutter. And it's okay if you get just get the trail sometimes because you'll want to use those later too. And don't be afraid to adjust your settings a little bit during the shots. If you realize that you want to get more burst or less burst, depending on what you're getting, you can dial it in every time you shoot. So I've adjusted my exposure a little bit as we've been shooting just to get a different amount of streaks going through the frame as the fireworks pop off. So now I'm shooting at about 3.2 seconds at F10. So when you shoot with this technique, you don't even actually have to worry about shooting the grand finale. You can sit back and enjoy it because the grand finale is going to have so many fireworks, so many pops, that it's just going to blow out any kind of firework exposure that you had anyway. So just sit back and enjoy the fireworks during the grand finale and you'll make an even better image after the fact. All right, so the fireworks are over. So let's go load these onto the computer and I'll show you what to do now. Okay, I've gotten all the images from the fireworks loaded onto the computer and now we've got to look at them and do a little bit of editing and then we're going to make our awesome firework photo. So here are the steps that I do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do some basic color correction. So I'm just going to go into develop here and I've already kind of done this on this photo just to sort of get the blacks really black. That's going to be important. Um, as you look through and you see the, the image, you don't want to see you know, a lot of background clouds or scenery or, or trees or things like that. So a little bit of smoke is okay, but you really just want to see the firework and nothing else. So I've added some contrast just to really make sure the blacks are there and drop those shadows down a little bit, maybe a little bit of clarity on that. And just since I like it, a little extra saturation. And then we're just going to apply that to everything by sinking it. And then once that's done, we're just going to quickly look through. So um, this first image looks okay, but it honestly takes up the whole screen and we're going to want something that doesn't fill up the whole screen. So uh, I'm not going to pick that one. Uh, that one would work. Uh, it's a little out of frame, but it might be okay. We'll keep it for now. That one will work. We'll keep that one. Keep. The, uh, the trails are going to work out really well for the final image. So. We'll keep some of these trails. That'll work. Those will work. Trail will work. Let's get that one. That'll work. Nah. Skip that one. Those will work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Yep. And so we're just going to kind of go through this process real quick for the rest of these. Also on a side note, if you get to an image and you need to make extra corrections, feel free to do that. Like this one, I'm just going to bring the exposure down just a little bit, just to really make sure that it's black. And again, this is what the grand finale would look like if you tried to capture that. It's just a blown out nightmare. So we don't need that one. Okay, so we've picked our images and now what we're going to do is export them out and then we're going to bring them into Photoshop. So let's do that. And to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is just change my filter and just say flagged. And that'll pull up the ones that we wanted. And then I will select all. And then we'll do file export. And we're just going to move them to our picture drive here. New folder. 
fireworks. Choose. Then make sure our resolution is still good. We're not going to change the size of anything. So all that is good and we will export. See, people think the life of a photographer is glamorous, but mostly we just wait on our computers to do things. All right, so there's a lot of ways to do this next part, but what I like to do is use the automate feature. And sometimes it doesn't work because we've got so much just black and it's the firework, but we'll see what happens. So file, automate, photo merge, and then we're going to add, oops, not open files. We're going to browse for our files with the fireworks, select all those, hit open, and we're going to take off the blend images together so it doesn't do anything. It just should just layer all the images for us. So we're going to do that and hit OK. And it's going to take a few minutes to load everything in if you've got a lot of files. OK, so in this case, it's saying it can't automatically align the images, which means it's probably going to give me some crazy aspect ratio image now. Yep. Okay. So it came in with a crazy aspect ratio and all we're going to do is just grab it there and then do image crop. Now we can bring it back up. Okay. Now that we've got all of our layers and you can see over here, we've got all of our layers stacked on top of each other. So if we go and just turn all the layers off, We've brought in all of our images and now they're layered up. We've got the bottom layer here, which has a nice firework. And if we hit the next one, obviously it's going to replace what we just had because we're showing the new layer. Now, the trick here is we're going to take the second layer or the layer above the, the last one we were working on and we're going to change its setting from normal to screen. And what that does is it basically takes everything that is black and makes it transparent. So now what we have are two fireworks that are showing and I can just sort of drag this to wherever I want it. So if I want it over here, maybe like that. Now we'll go up to the next layer, turn it on. Obviously it's going to show just that layer until we go down to screen. And then we've got that and we can pull that maybe out here like this. Go to our next layer. screen and bring that over yeah we'll bring this down here and as you get to certain images certain um, shots that you've taken you decide they work or they don't work with your image you can always just turn that layer off completely we'll go to screen because if it does it gets too busy and you don't want it to be too busy but you can also take the image and if you hit command T or, or Apple T shrink it down some bring it in somewhere else. The, the creative process at this point is completely up to you. You can also tilt and rotate a little bit if you want something to come in more from the side. Like that. So that's pretty much it. That is the process. Just keep layering it um, and then change the mode to screen and you can build whatever kind of grand finale firework you want. If you want to get really fancy with it, you can come down and you can bring in a base layer that you've shot, maybe a, a foreground like a building um, or a lake or something like that, and then make this bottom layer have that screen also, and it'll look like it's doing the grand finale uh, over, you know, over the lake or over a building or in a field or you know whatever kind of scenario you choose. But you can basically build out any kind of firework photo you want this way. Uh, you can even do it with just one image or two images or three. You don't have to do a whole grand finale, obviously. But anyway, this was a fun little tutorial I thought I'd share with you guys. It's something to get ready for 4th of July if you want to photograph some fireworks and, uh, and make some cool images. If you do decide to make a fireworks image like that, I'd love to see it. So post it to Instagram and tag me in it and I, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know what I think. So if you like this video, you found it helpful, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. That helps out the channel a lot. And uh, if you like this tutorial and you want to see more, leave a comment down below. Tell me what kind of tutorials that you're interested in doing. This was just a quick, simple one. Happens to actually be one of the first Photoshop tutorials I ever taught myself. So uh, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Anyway, thanks for watching and God bless.